other family members of mine had their first Pfizer jab uh, three weeks ago, and they had their second one yesterday. Their mm. GP did honour the original commitment to do it within three weeks. So what is the situation? Are GPs going rogue? Are they allowed mm -hmm. to go rogue? Do they have complete control over whether they do it after three weeks or 12? Can you, if you've had the first one, knowing that other people are clearly getting their second one after the agreed original period of three weeks, can you demand that? What, what's the situation? Mm. So GPs are using their discretion. So if an elderly person arrives at the surgery uh, and there is availability of the, the vaccine, which has to be stored, as you know, very carefully and has to be used up within a certain time uh, schedule, then there's no reason why that second dose can't be given. But the directive right now is that uh, people invited um, for their second uh, dose will be 12 uh, weeks after the first... When you say turn up at the surgery, do you mean unannounced or...? Well, no, no-one should turn up unannounced because otherwise you're going to get queues of people and you don't want, you don't want lots of gatherings. You should, if you're turning up at your appointment that you were originally given but somehow there's been a failure of communication yeah. and you've turned out and, and you didn't get the cancellation, it would still be honoured in most cases and GPs will use their discretion. Dr Hillary, there, there is an issue, as we, we were talking to Sir Geoffrey Boycott yesterday, because mm. he's furious about the fact there is now going to be a much bigger gap between the first and the second doses. As I understand it, um, Pfizer are also a bit confused about this three-month gap because they say they didn't do a clinical trial on that gap. Now, that has caused some anxiety, as, you, as we can see from Sir Geoffrey Boy Boycott and Dame Joan Bakewell mm. as well, who is launching legal action, uh, even though she has received both doses. Can you just put to rest anybody's fears about the fact that they're going to, it's going to take longer for them to get the second jab? Sure. OK. So, so when a clinical trial is uh, designed and it's run, uh, you, you have an endpoint. So the first dose is given, the second dose is given after three weeks. And that's, that's the data that you have. And from the data that Pfizer provided, we know that the first dose provides 89% protection. If you wait three weeks, you get the second dose, you get 95% protection. Mm. You get slight increased um, protection after the second dose. However, if someone is delayed the first dose because there aren't enough vaccines available, they have zero protection. So the government guidelines are that we delay the, the second dose for the few people and we give the first dose to as many people as possible to protect, to give good protection to but as many people. Just to clarify, yeah. now, all the percentages... I, no, I want to go through this very carefully because... The clinical got... trial thing, though, yeah. is one endpoint. So, so we use medicines all the time in medicine mm. that have been trialled for one particular purpose. For example, a cancer drug that's used to extend life in adults is trialled, but it's not trialled in children. But off-licence, that cancer drug can be used in children. It's not been trialled, but we know it's effective and it saves lives. But it doesn't mean to say just because it wasn't part of a clinical trial, it doesn't work. OK, but the, I license. want to get into the weeds... That's kind of, of the what percent... we're doing here. OK, I, I get that. Let's get into the weeds, though, of trying to reassure people about the percentages mm. that are flying around about your protection. So, Sir Jeff Boycott said it's only once you've had the first jab, you only get 52%. That's not right. Uh, right. So, well, he's not wrong. What that figure Depends is... Depends on the timing. That figure is for the first three weeks after you've had it, right? Until it yeah. builds up it, uh, to the, the full you, first yeah. dose immunity. Is the that way right? The, the way the vaccine works is it has to stimulate your own antibodies, and that takes time. Right. That takes two to three weeks. So you're not going to get immediate protection after the jab, which is why we say people... So what's the 52% figure? Because that does exist. Within the, few, within the first few days after the vaccination, you'll only get a limited amount of protection. But and, when, and after three weeks, the initial, three weeks, the initial period that Pfizer wanted, it goes to what figure? 89%. Right, so after three weeks of one jab, you are 89% protected. Yeah. Once you have the second jab, be it after three weeks or 12 weeks, that goes to 94. 94. So what we're really talking about, once you've had the, the first jab, after a three-week period, you are pretty nearly as well vaccinated as if you've had the second jab. Yes. You're only adding, and... really, 5% more plus, yeah. we believe a longer extended period of immunity, right? Yeah, and when you talk to the people who've got their whole careers based on immunology, people who, who are part of the Joint uh, Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation, they are saying it's very, very likely that that 89% protection after the first dose will last a long time, way past Could be the years, 12th right? week. Yes, it could be. We don't, we don't what know is because the this flu, is a Give me the flu situation. comparative number. Like, this year, 
the flu jab. Mm. If you have the one, you have one flu jab, right? Is that my understanding? Yeah. Uh, you have one flu jab, and if you have it, what what percentage do you get of that, for example? Protection, probably 60%, 65%. Right. So that's very interesting. So the average about. flu jab gives you a lot less than one jab. But it's still seen as very effective. Right, yeah. and yet the flu can be, for elderly people, just as lethal yeah, and different uh, for kind some of vaccine, people as, as the COVID. Different kind of vaccine. Remember, the flu jab is, is, is an attenuated form of the, of the virus. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a... Correct that. It's a, it's a killed... Uh, flu virus, which stimulates antibodies, whereas the the COVID uh, Pfizer vaccine is an mRNA uh, vaccine, so it's giving you a fragment of the genetic material of the virus, not the whole virus, part of the right. The, but uh, that, this is that's medical speak. In simple language, when you take a flu jab, you've got a sixty to seventy percent protection yeah. against getting the flu. Yeah. When you have the first visor jab, if that's all you have for twelve weeks. After three weeks, you have an 89% protection, mm. which is significantly higher. Actually, it's 25% higher Absolutely. than your flu jab. Which is why. So I, I just think yeah. we should spell this out because I think that reassures people. Yes. I think so. We've only had the first jab, that actually, after three weeks, you are very, very well yeah. protected. That's correct. Uh, and you don't have to worry too much about then having to wait another nine weeks. This is the, government's, right. this is the government's advice. With most vaccines, an extended interval between the prime and booster does, doses leads to a better immune response to the booster dose. There is evidence that a longer interval between the first and second doses promotes a stronger immune response. With the AstraZeneca vaccine, there is currently no strong evidence to expect that the immune response from the Pfizer-BioNTech and AstraZeneca vaccines differ substantially from each other. Yeah, and we, we are in a, a national crisis situation here where we want to protect the maximum number of people with the best possible protection in the shortest possible mm. time. And that means uh, that the duty of care, I would have thought, for the government, uh, for public health, is to, is to give every, as many people as possible the first dose and extend the period of time. But I totally understand dose. why Jeff Boycott, he really hit a nerve with this, and we're going to have uh, Dame Joan Bakewell and uh, Dame Esther Ransom, both of whom uh, have had the first jab. Well, Dame Joan Bakewell's had both jabs. She's had both. But she's own. cross on behalf of people Who've like not. the Jeffrey Boycott, yeah. not. who are who are going to wait a long time. And for Esther, the I think, jab. is getting her second one today. I think is that right? But what about uh, all those clinically due vulnerable to, people? Been oh, it's been sorry. Postponed. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. What about Just all the... those clinical vulnerable people who haven't had even a first dose? Yeah. Right. So Dame who's Esther representing Ranson... them? Yeah, Dame Esther Ransom I mean, has said she's thrilled that she's going to have her second jab delayed right. because she wants more people to get the So first they'll be jab. on later debating it. And Hillary, you can put that to Joan Baker. It's a perfectly legitimate uh, argument. I just think people are right, they're very anxious. If you're elderly right now, you know this virus is targeting you. You know that it is particularly lethal for people over 80. We know that three, because three, the vast majority three, of people who've died are over Three-fifths of people 80. over 80 haven't had the jab yet. Three-fifths. Um, the, the majority of people in care homes haven't had their first jab yet. Well, according to the, Surely according to the government, uh, just under 40% of over 80s in England have now had the first jab. That's good. That's I mean, good. we'll talk to Matt Hancock later. That's a good number. They've got to go faster, though, because, as we know, we've got one of the best records of putting out vaccines, but we also right now have one of the scariest, fastest-growing waves of the virus. Don't we? Mm. So it's a, it's it's devil in the deep blue sea. And we want, it? but we want people to be confident, don't we, about getting uh, about mm. getting the vaccine.